So what I'm going to talk about is um, like easy ways to stay current with all the literature that's constantly being published. Um, so what I'm not going to talk about is like how to evaluate an article, how to look at a particular topic that you want to know. It's basically a couple things, a couple minutes you can spend up front to electronically get uh, literature that you want to read streamlined into your emails and things like that. So you, you cut out a lot of the, the legwork. Um, so I have no disclosures. Um, that one of the challenges that we face, and especially being academic faculty, is there is lots of information out there, many different sources, and it, it can be difficult to just subscribe to every journal, read every journal, and, and try to stay current. Um, and as academic faculty, it's really important that we do that. So what I'm going to talk about is a couple different quick ways to use online services to streamline information and pretty much get it delivered to you. So when you do want to open stuff up and read, you're reading stuff that's high yield, relevant to your specialty. Um, the first thing that I would recommend that you do is sign up for something called the electronic table of contents. What these are is when a journal is published every month or whenever it's published, you can set your subscription electronically that it will email you the table of contents for that particular publication, and then it will give you links to the articles. But it's not something that will usually happen automatically. It's something that you have to do on your own, um, where you usually have to go in through your account, activate something through an alert section. And what's cool about this is you can customize things that may be relevant to your specialty. So if you want to subscribe to a cardiology journal or the New England Journal of Medicine, you can click it so it only gives you stuff that's relevant to emergency medicine. So you don't have to sift through all the GI stuff and infectious disease or obstetric stuff that you don't really need to see every month. Um, essentially trying to filter out stuff that's not relevant to you. So I would just recommend you pick two or three journals and set this up. So these are some screenshots of my phone just to show you what it looks like and how easy it is. So on the left here, um, you just go to, this is the Annals of Emergency Medicine. I think we all subscribe to this through our ASAP. So if you just go to this alerts section um, right here at the top, and then you click table of contents alert, and then hit save. It takes three seconds. And then the, on the right is just a couple screen caps of what you get in the email. So it really is just literally the table of contents with links. And it's, you know, you just read it, you say, what do I want to read? And then you can just click on it and it goes right to the article. And it's nice because you don't have to like go find a piece of paper somewhere when it's published, it comes right to you. You don't have to sit there and wait and think about when it's going to come out. Um, this is how you can do it through the New England Journal. So at the top right, you can see I click on my account. There's the drop down menu that says alerts. And then you click on it. And then down here in the left, you just click the weekly table of contents. And then if you scroll down, you can see more. You can just edit it by specialty. So when you have emergency medicine, you get an email like this every week. And it's it's kind of like, looks like very dated. It's just text, but you can see it's a, just a snapshot of what they've been publishing. And it's only the emergency medicine resident or uh, relevant things. So you can see they give you like clinical practice on epistaxis, some of the cases that have to do with ER. And it just, it filters out all the stuff from the New England Journal that isn't related to ER. So you just get what you need to know right in your inbox every week. Um, another thing that you can do is actually podcasts. Um, what's nice about these is the audio format. So you can do this if your hands aren't free or your eyes aren't free, like you're driving, doing some yard work, whatever. Um, I'm specifically going to talk about how they talk about publications, not just podcasts in general. Um, what's nice about these is the host will usually summarize the article for you, and then sometimes we'll actually critique it. So it's a little bit more of a passive way to get the information. A lot of times they're divided up into multiple short segments, five to 10 minutes long, so that you can get stuff that you need to know pretty quick. And then they'll also provide links to written material. So if you just want to look at the podcast and read the summary rather than listen to it, it's another way to just a couple clicks and you have what you need. So the example that I'm going to use is a podcast called MRAP. They have all kinds of content on their thing. It's a $500 a year prescription for, or subscription for us as attendings. Um, but specifically what I want to talk about is their emergency medicine abstracts portion. So every month they take 22 different papers that have been recently published from emergency medicine. 
and they summarize them and talk about them. So if you look on the right, this is just a short list of the 22. They're seven minute long episodes. They go through what the article shows and then they discuss it a little bit. Um, and they give you a link both to the journal article and then the written summary of the podcast episode. What's also kind of cool about this is there's a comment section. So if you have a question or you want to know something more, or you want to you know, kind of debate something about the article or ask how you can use this in your practice, you can talk with all the other ER docs and the, and the host will actually respond and help answer questions. So you get a little bit more access with this type of thing. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about is there's a couple different curation services that exist. I use Journal Feed. Um, these are services that will just every day or sometimes bi-weekly, they will just send you uh, a summary of an article. Um, and they're usually relevant articles and they're recent articles. So Journal Feed is free. You just sign up, you give them your email, and you click what kind of articles you want, and you will get an article at 6 o'clock in your inbox every day in the morning. Journal Watch is something from New England Journal. Um, you have to pay for that one, but twice monthly they will send you summary, summaries of key research in whatever field you want to know. So this is like the journal feed website. They, they advertise that they're going to spoon, spoon feed you the information. Um, so again, this is one of those things where if there's an, a new article that's published that this service thinks is important, they're just going to send it to you and you don't have to go looking and wondering, am I missing something important if you like to read the, the journal last month? Um, so this is what the emails look like. This is from a couple days ago, um, Crotalid and Venomation. So not super, super important for us right here in Michigan right now, but you can see how, how it works. So they just give you a summary of an article. There was somebody that basically did a review of 177 papers and came up with what they thought was the best evidence-based guidelines on how to deal with crotalid envenomations. And then they just bullet point it for you and then they provide a link to the article uh, so you can easily read the primary source if you want. And that's it.